the major media to speak out in defense of the rule of law and fundamental human rights exposes our cowardice and our hypocrisy. Those who openly condemn the Israeli crimes, including Israelis such as Yuri Avneri, Tom Segov, Ilan Pape, Gideon Levy, Amir Haas, as well as American stalwarts, Noam Chomsky, Dennis Kucinich, Norman Finkelstein, and Richard Paul are ignored or spurned like lepers. They are denied a platform in the press. They are rendered nearly voiceless. Fought the UN Special Rapporteur for Human Rights in the occupied territories and a former professor of international law at Princeton, was refused entry into Israel in December, detained for 20 hours, and deported. Never mind that nearly all of these voices are Jewish. Our self-righteous celebration of ourselves and our supposed virtue is exposed to be as false as that of Israel. We have become monsters militarized bullies, heartless, and savage. We are a party to human slaughter, a flagrant war crime, and do nothing. We forget that the innocents who suffer and die in Gaza are a reflection of ourselves, of how we might have been should fate and time and geography have made the circumstances of our birth different. We forget that we are all absurd and vulnerable creatures. We all have the capacity to fear and hate and love. Expose thyself to what wretches feel, King Lear said, entering the mud and straw hovel of poor Tom, and show the heavens more just. Falk labeled the assault before Israel made its incursion into Gaza uh, against the Palestinians as a crime against humanity. He reminded us that under international law, collective punishment of the Palestinians in Gaza is a flagrant and massive violation of international humanitarian law as laid down in Article 33 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. The public debate about the Gaza attack engages in the absurd pretense that it is Israel, not the Palestinians, whose security and dignity is being threatened. This blind defense of Israel, Israeli brutality towards the Palestinians is a betrayal of the memory of all those killed in other genocides in other times. that Jews are special. It is not that Jews are unique. It is not that Jews are eternal victims. The lesson of the Holocaust is that when you have the capacity to halt genocide, and you do not, no matter who carries out that genocide or who it is directed against, you are culpable. attack helicopters, the 250-pound smart GBU-39 bombs are all part of the $3 billion military aid we give to Israel. Palestinians are being killed tonight with American-made weapons. But perhaps our callous indifference to human suffering is to be expected. We, after all, kill women and children on an even vaster scale in Iraq and Afghanistan. There will be more Palestinian children who die. There will be more UN schools used as a sanctuary by terrified families, blown to bits 
by Israeli bombs, with more than 40 killed, half of whom were women and children. There will be more emaciated, orphaned children. There will be more screaming or comatose wounded in the corridors of Gaza's blooded hospital corridors. And there will be more Israeli lives. For that is what governments do in war. They distort and manipulate the facts, knowing that propaganda is a vital instrument in wartime. The shelling of the UN school in Jabalia took place, Israel said, because Hamas fighters had been firing mortars from near the school entrance. And they offered proof, an aerial photo which showed the school and the mortar. But the photo it was uncovered was more than a year old. It was a lie. And lies permeate the absurd reports like the one on the front page of this Sunday's New York Times titled, A Gaza War Full of Traps and Trickery. In this story, unnamed Israeli intelligence officials gave us a spin on the war worthy of the White House fabrications made on the eve of the Iraq War. We learned about the perfidious and dirty tricks of Palestinian resistance fighters. Foreign reporters barred from Gaza and unable to check the veracity of the Israeli version of the war are asked to abandon their trade as reporters to become stenographers. The cynicism of conveying Israeli propaganda and lies as truth, as long as, as it is sourced to unidentified Israeli officials, is the poison of American journalism. is all journalism has become. If moral outrage, the courage to defy the powerful, the commitment to tell the truth, and to give a voice to those who without us would have no voice, no longer matters, that our journalism schools should devote their energies to teaching shorthand. <laughs> it seems to be the skill most ardently coveted by the majority of our senior editors and news producers. Edward Said wrote about what he termed the fawning elasticity with regard to one's own side that has disfigured the history of intellectuals since time immemorial. And this disfigured history saturates our airwaves, our universities, and our newsprint. <laughs> 